Hello and welcome into this beautiful word from the Lord today. I'm so glad that you're here and that you're listening to this message because I know that it's a divine appointment. I know that it is not by accident that you're here. I firmly believe that every single person the Lord sends to this ministry channel, that you're supposed to be here. And every single person that the Lord sends to very specific messages, that you're supposed to listen to this message. Why do I firmly believe that? Because I pray that every day, that the Lord will send people to these messages who need to hear it. And that is why they're so relevant. That is why they're so powerful. And that is why they're so encouraging and life altering for those who tune in because they're meant to be here. You're meant to be here. You're meant to hear this word from the Lord today. So I was sitting at my desk today, this morning, this very desk, and the Lord gave me a very specific word today. And usually when that happens, when it's fresh and it's the day of, they're very uh, there are specific people who need to hear what it is that the Lord dropped within my spirit. So I'm glad that you're here and you're listening to this. So I want to start out by saying that there are times when the Lord will do something new in your life, meaning he will completely do something absolutely new. You've never seen it before. You don't even, you have no blueprint for how to operate through this thing. It's completely new. It is literally where we see and hear within the word of God where he, where he says, behold, I shall do a new thing. But then there are times in our life where God isn't doing a completely new thing, but he's bringing it all back better than before. There's a time where he's restoring something in your life, meaning he's restoring it back to where it's almost looks like new, right? You would think it was something new because it's so much restored back to whatever it was that you had before times a hundred. It's almost like it's you and that thing 2.0. It's like you get an upgrade. And it's so much so to the point where you would think it was new. You would think it was new. It's all, it reminds me of how the Lord uh, Jesus restored humanity, right? He didn't, there was a time, yes, back in the days of nowhere where he completely wiped out the earth, but I, I want you to stick with me here. He didn't completely wipe out humanity. He said he would never do that again, but what did he do? He restored us. He didn't say, I was gonna do a completely new thing. He said, no, I'm not gonna do that again. I'm gonna send my son to restore them, to redeem them. So there's a time where God will do something completely new. He'll wipe this lake clean. He'll do something totally new. And then there are, time, there are times where he will introduce something into your life. He'll bring it back, he'll run it back, but it will be, like new it'll be completely restored and there's a reason why he does it i'm gonna i'm gonna get into why he does that but first what i want you to understand is that the lord had released to me today he said and i'm gonna read i'm gonna quote exactly what i heard the lord say he said all that you lost is coming back and he gave me a scripture and i'm gonna read that to you but he said all that you lost is coming back even now even now what did he mean by even now he meant that right now it's making its way back to you. So even though you may not see it now, even though you may not be experiencing it now, like I talked about in that last message, but it's making its way back to you, all that you lost. And I'm gonna put this in context for you by taking you to the word of God so we can hear it from, the, from Jesus himself, literally Jesus saying this himself, all that you lost is coming back to you even now. We understand that anytime the Lord restores something, it's always going to be better than what it was before, because that's just how God, that's God's way of doing things. That's kingdom style of doing things. He's always upgrading things in your life. He's always restoring it back better before. He's always restoring back more than before. We understand even with the story of Job, how Job lost everything, but the Lord restored it back more than what he had before. Anytime you give up something for the sake of following this journey with the Lord. Anytime you give up anything for the Lord's sake, he's going to restore it back better than before. There are many of you who have given up relationships for God's sake, where maybe you're the person you're in a relationship with were not following in the ways of the Lord. There are many of you who have given up entire friendship groups, meaning you've walked away from entire groups of people. I know that I have many years ago, I made a decision in my life that I was going to completely walk away from entire friendship groups. And Looking back now, one of the best decisions that I've ever made, there are many of you who have done the same. Did God restore it back? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. There are many of you who have given up jobs, right? You've given up jobs, well-paying jobs for the Lord's sake and have lived to tell the tale and, and say the truth and testimony. Look, God has restored it all back better than before, more than before, more than before. There are many of you who have given up houses, cars. We're going to get to the word of God so I can show you where Jesus says that he's going to restore it back. And it's coming back to you even now. It's making its way back to you even now. I want you to go back and listen to the past couple messages that I've done, if you haven't already, because they're really just um, messages to help you get in alignment to receive all that is getting ready to come back to you. Because this is the God that we serve. He'll never allow you to relinquish something or give up something without restoring it back better than before. And if he does, hear this, if he does not restore it back, He'll give you something in replace of that, that you need versus what you wanted. And then you'll see, this is, this is what I should have desired all along. So there are many of you who have given up things for the sake of God, and he's going to restore it back better than before. He said, all that you've lost is coming back even now. I want to take you to Mark, and this is going to be a very quick message, but I want you to really tune into and lock into the words that I'm saying because I know this is relevant for many of you who are listening now. I want you to put in the comments below if it is. I want to take you to Mark chapter 10 verse 27 through 31. This is Jesus speaking. Listen to this. And Jesus looking upon them says, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. So here, here it is. Are you listening to me? There are things that you have tried to bring about in your life in the past, and it just did not work out. For whatever reason, it did not work out. Why? Because you needed God's supernatural ability to put on, be put on that thing. It did not work out. And there's a reason for that. It says, with men, it is impossible. But with God, for with God, all things are possible. So the things that he's bringing back, the things he's going to run back in your life 100% restored, it's going to have God's supernatural ability on it. It's going to have God's supernatural capability on it. This means that things that were not possible before, for some reason, it just didn't work out. You said, Lord, I'm relinquishing this to you. I'm relinquishing this relationship to you. I'm relinquishing this job to you. I'm relinquishing this opportunity to you. I'm giving up this this car for you, this this friendship group, whatever it is, and it did not work out. You said, Lord, I'm giving it over to you. With man, it's impossible. But God is going to run it back completely restored, better than it was before. Why? Because this time it's God. This time God has his thumbprint on it. I seen in the realm of the spirit where I was in my prayer time once and I was praying about something very specific and I seen the Lord put a stamp on it, like a stamp of approval almost, where he's saying, it didn't work that time. This time my stamp is on it. My thumbprint is on it. My stamp of approval is on it. So he's going to run it back, completely restored this time with his supernatural ability backing that thing in your life. Then Peter began to say to him, lo, we have left all and have followed thee given up everything how many of you there are some of you who have literally given up everything there are some of you who have moved entire states there's some of you who have sold all that you have to follow what it is that the lord has told you to follow to do what it is that the lord has told you to do there's some of you who have let go of family members because they were just operating in rebellion and disobedience the, do you know that the lord can restore your family he'll give you a new family do you know that Lo, we have left all and we followed you. And hear what Jesus says. He says, and Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left their house or brethren or sisters or father. He's talking about family here. Things that are dear to us, things that are valuable to us, important to us, or mother or wife or children or lands. These are atmospheres, these are environments, jobs. For my sake and the gospel's sake, 
but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. What is a hundredfold? It means the best possible outcome, the absolute best. He's not saying kind of okay, I'm kind of gonna restore this a little bit. I'm gonna do just a little tiny bit here. No, he's saying you're gonna receive the best possible outcome of restoring this thing in your life. But he shall receive a hundredfold, the best possible, now in this time, houses and brethren. He's saying now in this time, not after you die, right? There are many people who like to believe that they have to wait until they pass away to receive all the things of God when they go on to be, go on to glory, to be with God in the heavenlies. God is saying now in this time, in this time you will restore it back a hundredfold, the best possible. In this time you shall live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And brothers, he's saying now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and brothers and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. Then he goes on to say, but many that are first shall be last and the last first. So he's saying those who choose to humble themselves before the Lord and give up these things that they know that they've been trying to do in their own might or power. Just give it all up to the follow the way of the Lord. And there are many of you who have done that. God is going to restore it back to you. It's coming back to you even now. There are many of you who have testimonies where you can look back over the course of your life, maybe even just recently, and say, God has brought that thing back. I say, I, I've said in a couple messages where I said we're in a full circle moment where there's a lot of things that are coming full circle in your life. A lot of things that are coming full circle in your life, meaning these are things that you have, you have walked in in the past. These are things that you've seen in the past. You've tried to make happen in the past. You've tried in your own might or power. For some reason, it didn't work out. For some reason, that relationship didn't work out. For some reason, the marriage didn't work. For some reason, the job didn't work out. For some reason, you lost everything. You lost some, for some reason, you couldn't get the house. Whatever it is, for some reason, you could not have the child. Whatever it is, full circle moment, coming to pass, situations restored better than before. Will it be exactly the same? No. Why? Because this time, God's stamp of approval on it. This time, God is in it. There's a difference when God shows up for you. And there's a difference. Can you believe that? I want you to put in the comments that you believe that. And not only do you believe that, but you receive it. I want you to say it throughout your mouth using your God-given authority that you receive that for you and your family and your household. Today, today, it's for you today. You don't have to pass away and wait to go on to glory and receive it in the heavenlies. It's for you today. He will restore it all back a hundredfold, the best possible. It's got God's stamp of approval on it. So I want to say a quick prayer for you. Lord, we all gather here together before you and we are your humble servants. And we want to thank you for the things that you're doing in our life because we know that it's always going to be the best possible outcome when we partner our faith with your word, Lord God. We're believing in what your word says. And anytime that we do that, we understand that you're able to, by our faith, move throughout our life in a way that we've never seen before. Move throughout our life in a way that we could, we could not do on our own, not in our own might or power. So we thank you for the things to come. We thank you for everything that's coming back to us in the best possible way with the best possible outcome. We thank you for all the wonderful and magnificent things that are on its way to us. Even now, as you say, Lord God, that we shall see it. Even now, it's, on, it's making its way back to us. We shall live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And we thank you for this, Lord God, that we don't have to wait till after we die to receive it. We thank you for, we thank you for this, Lord God, that it is ours now for the taking that it's coming back to us that we shall live life more abundantly and not only shall we live li we live life more abundantly but that our children will live life more abundantly and that our children's children will live life more abundantly because this is our portion it is a part of our inheritance Lord God these are the promises of God for us and we thank you for them we thank you that we have access to them we thank you for the truth that goes forth. We thank you for your word, which is the absolute truth above every other truth. Let God's word be true and every man a liar. And we hold it high up above every thing that this world system could throw at us. We put it above everything else, Lord God, and we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, amen.
So I know that this was a right on time confirmation for many of you. And I know that it is really relevant to, to what many of you are going through right now. If, that, if that's the case, put it below. Put it in the comments below. I want you to share this message with other people. I always like to give the opportunity to get seed and fertile ground. And I give this opportunity because there was a point in my life where I did not know. I did not know the power and the principles of seed time and harvest time. And I did not know what it could do for my life. And then when I started operating in putting, just putting seed and fertile ground in these principles and working the word, I'm telling you that it's almost like putting the things that you're believing in God for on speed dial. It's almost like putting God on speed dial because your, your, speed, your seed speaks to God and it's you telling God, hey, Lord, not only do I believe that you're going to bring this thing to pass, but I'm going to back it up with works. I'm, be I'm believing in you so much. I'm believing in your word so much to bring this thing to pass that I'm going to put a seed behind it. Because what is it, right? What is it to put a seed behind what it is that, the, that God said he's going to do? It's nothing. Holding on to that, and what I mean by saying it's nothing, is holding on to that to say, Lord, I'm going to keep this because... I just don't believe that the seed means anything. It's really saying that you don't believe that God isn't going to honor that seed. Where it talks about constantly all throughout his word. And I'm telling you, I have my journal right here. Where I pray over every single seed. God's word tells us all throughout it how he honors our seed and how it speaks to him. These, This is his word and it's a part of his principles. There is, and I want you to write down these scriptures. I only released them all to you once, but I really want you to write down these scriptures and study them, study them. And I'm only telling you this because I know that it's gonna change your life because it changed my life when I was really able to grab hold of these concepts when it comes to seed time and harvest time. So I want you to write down Malachi chapter three, verse 10 through 11, where God tells us that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake and make sure that your seeds and your harvest is not devoured up. That is as a result of you tithing consistently. Um, there is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, where the word of God says, Given it shall be given unto you with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. This is the word of God. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22 tells us that as long as the earth remains, come on, Lord, as long I feel the anointing of God on this. As long as the earth remains, there will always be a harvest. There will always be a harvest. Do not let the enemy convince you that there is not a harvest. And I'm telling you, if there's any doubt in your mind when you put a seed in the ground, don't do it. Do not do it. Because it's only by your faith that it's able to come back to you multiplied. And I'm believing in God with you for the hundredfold, the best possible. There's Luke chapter 6, verse 38, where, like I said, again, um, Oh no, Luke chapter 6 verse 38 is the verse that says, given it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 tells us that those who give bountifully will reap bountifully. Those who give sparingly will reap sparingly. And I will, I'll give you a small interpretation of really what that means, but it's, it's self-explanatory. It just means that you give at the level that you want to receive back. You give at the level that you want to receive back. I'll leave you with that and I'll let you study those scriptures on your own. And if you want to just get more details and context on that, I do have an entire Kingdom Economy playlist for you to check out where I go more in detail on that. For those of you who are wanting just a quick, um, a quick idea where you're at on your journey with the Lord, you're just not really sure, you, you're on this journey with God and you're trying to receive the promises of God, but you're not really sure where you're at on this journey and what is requiring of you next. There is the Promised Land Roadmap, it's completely free. I encourage you, highly encourage you to grab that if you haven't, because it's gonna give you clear instructions on what God is requiring of you now to get to that next level. That link, as, long, as well as the link to so into the ministry is in the description below and for those of you who are unaware i just released a new book daily bread 365 devotions for those seated at his feet there have been hundreds of people who have received these devotionals in email format through the mentorship and they have emailed in on a consistent basis like pretty much on a weekly basis, sometimes daily, where we get emails where people say, oh my God, this is really prophetic. This made me, this 
brought me to tears. It's how did you know this is exactly what I was going through this day? Here's the thing. I did not know. It is the spirit of God. And it's, and I'm always going to give God all the glory. So if you're wanting to receive those, if you're wanting to grab that in book format, and I'm actually, I'm glad I'm sitting here at my desk because I have the book here on me. Give me a second. This is what it looks like. And there's a sticky note here because I'm, I'm going through it daily. Yes, I'm going through these devotions daily, even though I wrote them because they're extremely prophetic by the spirit of God and they minister to me too. So if you want to receive this book, there's 365, maybe a little bit more than 365 devotionals in here. Absolutely beautiful. And there's notes in the back. Let me see if I can find it. There's a note taking section in the back and on each page for you to write notes um, when it comes to what the Lord could be, minister could be ministering to you as you go through them. So I encourage you to grab that book if you haven't already. The link is in the description below. And I ask that you subscribe to this ministry, cha ministry channel so that you're not missing out on these messages as they continue to go forth. I love you all so much and I'll talk with you in the next message.